so uh, I've got with me here Aaron Brown, um, and I just uh, we're just going to do a short piece based on Aaron's talk uh, at the conference on Tuesday. So Aaron, just uh, tell me what you do for a living. Well, I'm a risk taker, I'm a poker player, and I work as a risk manager for hedge fund in Greenwich, Connecticut. Great, thanks. Well, um, well I thought you gave a really interesting talk on Tuesday. I just wondered if you could briefly explain the distinction you made in your talk between risk takers and risk avoiders. Sure, Dylan. It's, um, it's something I've thought about for a long time. There really do seem to be two different types of people in the world. It's uh, not something you get a lot of people in intermediate. Some people basically treat life as unpredictable, and they tend to be very good at dealing with risk. They take a lot of risk. Uh, they don't not afraid of it, mostly because they take so much of it that it averages out. Uh, they tend to be very good at three things, which is making sure they have a positive expectation, uh, making sure their bets are independent, and um, making sure that uh, they uh, never take a bet so big that they can fail to bet again. Right. Uh, the risk avoider is a more common group. Um, these people do take risk. And you can't get through life without risk, but they don't seek it out. They take, treat it as a cost. They'll take risk to meet a goal, but for no other reason. Uh, they minimize the risk. They don't fundamentally think about every day as a bet. Uh, they fundamentally think of decisions as things you can reason through, predict the likely outcome, and, uh, and deal with it that way. And the risk that comes up, you just try and deal with as best you can. OK, thanks. Um, and you seem to place a lot of the blame for the banking crisis on the fact that risk avoiders edged the risk takers out of Wall Street uh, in the 1980s and 1990s. I don't know if I'm right about the dates, but um, I wonder if you could just uh, elaborate on that briefly. Yeah, that, that's a little bit unfair. Um, risk takers and risk avoiders cause different kinds of disasters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, Wall Street traditionally has been, in finance in general, has been a business of sales. Right. Salespeople tend to be risk avoiders. Uh, salespeople, we have investment bankers who sell investment banking services. We have asset managers who sell asset management services. And, and most people on Wall Street uh, are security salespeople, bond salesmen, stock salesmen, and so on. It really was only in the 70s that the risk takers started to come because of the dislocations of the economy. And it was absolutely an economic crisis that brought them in. Uh, they were, many of them were games players, they were professional poker, bridge, backgammon players. Even the ones that weren't were people who had taken risk all their lives. And they did kind of get pushed out. Um, the risk takers caused lots of little disasters. You have scandals, you have rogue traders, you have firms going down. But they tend to make independent bets. They don't all make the same bet because that's part of their nature. They don't bet more than they can lose. So what you get is you get lots of blow ups, lots of scandals but the system uh, remains okay. Uh, risk avoiders all make the same bet. They take comfort in the fact everybody's doing the same thing. The, the, the advice says that they look at, you know, we've had six years of growing profit, so it must be right. Mm -hmm. uh, risk of, a risk taker will say, uh, I want to make my money while the time is good. I know th I'll lose someday. There will be a losing streak, and uh, I'm prepared for it. Um, I'll take some losses then, but I'll make more profits in the good time. The risk avoiders tend to scratch it up, 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 the better things get. And, Eventually, you get the disaster, and they're in a much bigger position than they were the rest of the time. Uh, some of the things that drove the risk takers away, uh, a lot of it was just better opportunities. It mm -hmm. was uh, they were pulled out to venture capital, uh, out of an internet company, go to California, uh, private equity. For the first time, risk takers were allowed to take over companies, um, hedge funds. Um, the investment banks typically did a lot of this trading for themselves. Um, and a trader for an investment bank can make a lot of money, 10, 20, 30 million, but a hedge fund manager can make billions. So uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the risk takers took the hedge fund route. Then there was a real effort in finance to systematize things. We got these big companies, everybody merged, and uh, these big integrated financial services firms were built, um, they were regulated, and the regulations tend to squeeze out the risk takers. Um, they tend to encourage putting everything on one big risk. They tend to encourage conventional thinking. If you fail in some new way, everybody says you're stupid and there are regulations against it and they get fired. Uh, but if you fail in a conventional way that everybody recommends that you were supposed to have done the whole way, then you get bailed out. So, uh, so we created a system that was this was going to happen to eventually. Uh, we pushed out the risk takers, we ran it, we got rid of a lot of Little problems, but we had to pay for it with the one big problem. Right. Okay. Uh, well, you, finally, you describe the current measures being taken by many governments to solve the banking crisis as the most 
optimistic double down in history. <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered if you could say, what is a double down and why is that a good metaphor for our current approach? Okay, well, it's a term that comes from blackjack. Uh, as most of you know, in blackjack, the uh, player gets two cards and is allowed to draw as many extra cards as they like to improve their hand. However, they have the option of taking exactly one card and doubling their bet. So when you get a certain kind of hand in blackjack, for example, if you were dealt an 11, um, it's a good hand, you're likely to win, so you, uh, you take the advantage of that by doubling the bet, and you're probably only going to want one card anyway, so it doesn't cost much to give up that extra card. Um, it's probably not a perfect analogy to what we're doing, but we're in a situation where we had a complete disaster. Um, we didn't get rid of any of the people. We, well, we shuffled a few of them around and, and moved from one place to another, but basically the same people are running the banks, the same people are running the regulatory authorities, and they're trying to rebuild the credit system exactly the way it was before. Um, it failed once, so let's double our bet and try it again. <laughs> I hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much, Aaron. That's Aaron Brown from AQR Capital Management. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. <laughs>